Well, it's great to see everybody here for the DevCon. This year, I know absolutely nothing about it, which is a great feeling. Uh, everybody else has done all the work, and uh, it's, it's fantastic to have Jerry and Stephen and Robert and a whole bunch of other people who have been involved in, in the planning with us. Uh, it's great to see everybody here uh, pushing Amiga forward like we do here at this show. And uh, the show, as always, is all about the people. So if we didn't have anybody here, we wouldn't have any show. Thanks for coming. Uh, it's really great to see you, and uh, I'll be, I have to work today. So I won't be around for the rest of the day. But I'll probably see you tomorrow and uh, for certain for the week. So thanks for coming. And uh, I'll turn it over to the people who actually know what they're doing.
Except for the one guy in the shades, that he looks suspicious. But the rest of you are good. Okay? Shades and Now, um, this, we are going to delve into some assembly language, Trevor. Because this source level debugger will show you the source code and the assembly beside it. And I have not seen this on Amiga for a very long time. And I'm glad to see it back. Very glad. Now, I am not good at power PC, power PC assembly. I am not. I am not good at it. Okay, so I'm going to try, <laughs> but don't expect miracles from me. Um, we got a comment then from the people online so they can see the, the new OS screen that we see and not the slideshow. They can't see the slideshow. They cannot see the slideshow. Were you expecting to be showing the slideshow right now? Mm -hmm. We can't see the slideshow either. I'm we sure. no, we don't see this. We see that screen. There's no slideshow? There's a slideshow? Yeah. Oh. Oh. Who knew? Oh. oh. Showing the slideshow. We thought you were just talking. <laughs> I'm sorry. I'm sorry. Um, I'll, I'll, I can easily fix it. We thought you were just talking. <laughs> yes. How do I? What do you do? I wasn't sharing my screen. That's my fault. It's okay. I'll fix it. Always your fault. What? I love Zoom, by the way. It's great. Love it. Where's your screen? Uh, go to the bottom there. Buttons. Dock. Wall. The bottom. There you go. I see that. The green. At the bottom. I don't know what you're talking about. Are you seeing what's on the screen there? No. I don't know what that is. Yeah. It's a murderous creature. You're not supposed to say that out loud. <laughs> Why? 
times. You have to say it three times, maybe. Okay, now I'm going to try to bring up my um, my camera here. One moment. Uh, screen sharing is paused. News share. Camera share. Close other apps. Nobody complained about other apps. <laughs> Looks like another app is using the camera already. What other app? What do you what camera are you? My camera, camera. Where is it? Hold on. I had it working before a uh, crash. Well, Zoom is using it, obviously. Yeah, but I want Zoom. I want Zoom to stop. Stop share. Okay. Um, get the camera working. There we go. That's what I want. Yes. Okay. I want that. And I want to share that. Okay. All we see is your name. Now, now the. Now you see something. Or, 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 or. There we go. There we go. Okay. Okay. We got it. Don't worry. Don't panic. I'll tell you when to panic. Don't panic. No, not yet. It's coming. <laughs> Which, that's the PC, that's the Amiga, okay, that's the Amiga, so hopefully I can make this visible, image, and this one, thank you very much, thank you, what, where's the first again, main size, very little shit called Topaz. What? No. Do you to make the text large in the shell? Yeah. There's a preferences editor. I'll do a set font. Oh, there's a preferences editor now. Okay. Mm -hmm. Is it called console? No, no. There's, there's a right, right, right click. Right click. Right click. I'm going to go menu. Settings. Edit. From menu. So the secret to debugging, though, is you have to put G-stabs on there. See that uh, option? Dash G-stabs? 
Stabs are good. Stabs. Stabs likes stabbing. Okay? <laughs> okay? He likes to stab me. Okay? And uh, <laughs> so you have to put dash G, that's for, uh, what do you call it? G? Debug? I think that means debug. What? GCC land dash G? I don't remember. I don't know, all the arguments. You don't know them off the top of your head? No. That's why if somebody creates a nice make file for me on apps, who knows? You know, <laughs> call yourselves a programmer. <laughs> <laughs> what do you mean? That's what we got code bench for. Make a dash for that's not going to work. I haven't called a compiler directly since college. <laughs> <laughs> what? It's true. What? Everybody everybody makes nice make files for me. I don't have to bother. What kind of freaking developer are you? Oh, I'm not a software what guy. What does dash G mean? Oh, I know you're not a software guy, but freak, come on. Well, it's always easier to let somebody else do it. Yeah. Dash G. Yeah. It's in there somewhere. I call it very hard to story with Dash G. Hey, you need Dash G. That's important. I got to find from a. And you have to put stabs because stabs is the uh, is the debugger object file additions. Like it, it puts in all the wonderful uh, line numbers of the source code and what goes with what. Like it's a, it's a like an index. Cross reference so that the debugger can take the stabs information and your source code file, mix them together, and show you the lovely GUI. Right? That, that goes for any computer. Just they usually hide it for the weak who can't remember the command line. <clears throat> okay. <laughs> now we'll start up Spotless. Now, Spotless is a, a GUI, like I said. So I've, I've compiled my program with stabs. It's ready to go. Now I, now I popped up the GUI for Spotless, right? And uh, I don't think I can make that font very different. Uh, maybe but you, you could kind of make it out, and yeah, sort of. Is it okay? The video? Yeah. It's, it it's okay. A little tight. A little tight. So I'm going to load the program. So you got to load your program, and you're going to run. That's always the name of the game. So I'm going to go find it. I didn't put it in the. There's Badgie. Okay, I'll load him up. Now, the first thing it's going to ask is okay, do you have any command line arguments for Badgie? And I don't. So that's just no. That's your arguments like dash g this, whatever you like. Okay, and now it says okay, I can't find the source file. Which one is it? Well, that's this one right here. Ta da! There's Badgie. That's his program. Now that's going to be tiny, probably. I'm that's pretty tiny. If I can make uh, the font larger on this sucker. If there's a way to do it, I don't really know what it is. Configure? No. I wish you know the depth of this stuff. But fortunately, the source code for this is public, so we can, uh, we can fix it here. You guys have a few hours? Okay. <laughs> so it's got all sorts of wonderful windows and things. The important part, at least in my mind, is these little boxes on the left-hand side of the source code. This is just like if you're used to like visual code, because most people know that one now. Being it works on almost everything, Linux, Mac, all that stuff. And it's free. So we're programmers are notoriously cheap. So uh, <laughs> <laughs> there you go. So what you do is you just put a little check mark there, and that means breakpoint. So that's where it's going to stop running your program. Right? So I can say, okay, stop at this subroutine, stop before I return, and stop just before I enter the program. Because as you guys are hopefully programmer types, you know main is the start of the C program. It always has to be called me. So that's me in there. Uh, the subroutine over here, I'm going to break it somewhere in the middle, just for fun. So what I've done is I've set up a bunch of breakpoints. So these are points where I want to stop and look at this, what the state of the program is. And I'm going to hit the start button, and it's going to go as fast as computers go to the first line. It's like blinking, right? Now it's at that curly brace. 
So I'm at the curly brace. What do I see? Well, I got no variables. I got a stack, but it's pretty boring. I got a start in there. That seems magical. That's underneath the covers. Every uh, OS4 program has a start symbol called underscore start. And down here, I'm going to scroll this up. I see the line 11 and the assembly language right beside it, PowerPC assembly. So we got any uh, PowerPC, assembly, PowerPC assembly people in the audience? Anyone? Anybody? There's one. I know some. Yeah. There's one. There's so one you know what that means then. Uh, maybe if you give me a few hours with it, <laughs> I can figure it <laughs> <laughs> Now, STW, <coughs> store word. Uh, yep. Uh, MFLR, move, help the link register. You got it. Right? You right. Got I it. got that one. Uh, STW, store word, Corey. Uh, MR, that's a shortcut for move register, I think. Correct. Right. Okay. I kind of know it. I can fake it. <laughs> it's much easier to work in C. <laughs> Maybe for you. <laughs> Maybe for me. <laughs> yep, yep. Some people love assembly. That's all they, they live. Yeah, it's me. <laughs> Some people live. I suffer. Um, I'm, I'm a little bit higher than that. So I'm going to start again, and what it'll do is jump to the next breakpoint. And something interesting happens. The output. Like if you have any standard I.O., it goes to a window, and the little window will just capture all the output and all the input, right? So, um, I'll just pause this for a second. <coughs> second caught. Well, excuse me. Code. Because I, I don't think people appreciate it. <laughs> So the reason that uh, he opens a brand new window is because piping stuff in Amiga is tricky. So instead of just trying to pipe it, he just opens a brand new window and throws the text up. Now in Visual Code, it'll have, have a little terminal window, and you can see the output there. Every debugger's got that kind of feature. I just wanted to point that out, so I'm going to put that in the background. So now I'm in the subroutine, right? And uh, now you have a choice. I can hit start again, I can hit step over, or step into, or step out. So, with subroutine, you might want to step into the subroutine. That's why you have step into. You can go into the subroutine, or you can just step over it. You can uh, make it all run very quickly, you step over top. So that's what I wanted to point out. So it runs the code in the subroutine, it doesn't skip the code in the subroutine. Yeah. But I can skip it if I want, because you know, in a, in a big program, you're going to have thousands of subroutines. Yeah, and there might be something you're, you're trying to avoid. You don't care about 99% of everything, right? You want to step over, step over, step over, step in, step out. You, well, so, but the step over is skipping it. No, it runs the code. Okay. It just steps the debugger over it. So oh, it runs okay. the code. Okay. Yeah. Okay. You're just not looking at it, you're not interested right. for whatever reason, right? That's the power debugger. It's also the frustration of it because it's so slow. Usually very hard to find bugs this way. But you need it sometimes. <laughs> I'm going to step in. So now I'm in the subroutine, right? And uh, I just want to maybe go a couple more steps. So I'm going to go step up, just do a step <coughs> over, and maybe do another step over. Doing something with that line. Oh, there you go. Now I stepped over. There should be an output. It's a subroutine over here. There it is. Woohoo! See? Because it did a print. I'm going to go, okay, do a couple of floating points. And that's why I want to pop up the registers. So you got all the usual PowerPC registers there. All the flags, all the wonderful stuffs. Stuff. Of course, everyone knows what all these are, right? <laughs> so MSR, I think that's machine state register. That's the 
one of the most important registers in a power PC. It tells you what state your machine's in. And each of those bits in the hexadecimal number, very, very important. And that's where you whip out your reference manual. <laughs> and figure out what they mean for your particular core. Um, what's that, IP or LP? What is it? That's an I, instruction pointer, I think. Yeah, that just tells you what instruction it's on. GPR is general purpose register. You can't click on any of those and get any, any. Okay. No, you don't get help. You don't know what you're doing. You want help? Yeah. Cry. Like how about Cry. text? Uh, <laughs> text is something, a uh, translation or something that, no help for you. No, apparently not. You and will learn hex code. And there's 32 registers on this particular <laughs> core. Is it, is it always 32 at PowerPC? Is it, I'm sorry? Is it always 32 registers at PowerPC? No. Sometimes there are more or less? Mm, there's not less. There's, oh, there's more? There can be. I don't know. The, the, the ISA itself does not specify yeah. a fixed number of GPRs. There's a minimum. Minimum. Okay, so you got a minimum number. So in this particular CPU, so maybe you got 30 37. Right. Well, the other the other issue is is that in, in some cases, if you depending on the, the instruction, there's only so many bits you can use for the IP of the of the register. So kind of by definition, you're limited to a certain number of bits, which limits you to a certain number of registers. You know, I never thought about that because I just don't care. Well, because that I have to ad address the register. But you're right, you have to have, everything in the computer has to have an address. That's right. Including the register. Right. So, and so yeah. the architecture. I never thought about that. There's reserved, <laughs> well, there's reserved bits, there's reserved bits in the architecture. Uh, yeah. In the, I don't remember what the carpency equivalent of the program storage word is, but whatever that is. Um, and in the future, what will happen is there'll be a flag that will be set. And it'll actually enable you to have two different flavors of a whole series of instructions. So that in theory, you now can have more registers or whatever else because of the standard fields. Uh, for a, you don't so want, but that's really messy. But Power ISA is messy. So it, for those who can't hear on the internet, you're saying that basically you can have uh, an option added to hardware architecture that you can have a bit that flips you to another set of registers or another set of instructions or whatever, right? You, the hardware people but it is only are mad. One oh. <laughs> yeah, the opcodes are exactly the same. Oh, the opcodes are the same, exactly but the it's same. entirely different functions. Yeah. No, 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 no. Well, I mean, it's entirely, yes, yeah, the, the field's going to be Yeah, you can remap them on a flick of a bit. Yeah. God yeah, forbid uh, they do that, but it's possible. It's possible in the hardware universe, yeah, sure. yeah. because you know in software we we have it so easy we, we need more complication. So that's okay. Uh, <laughs> are you blaming hardware guys again? I don't have to blame them. They are the source of all evil. <laughs> <laughs> it's just it's a given. It's like the sun will rise. Nature. <laughs> you don't like it. Run your code on a loom. And there's a defense. Anyway. <laughs> uh, <laughs> As opposed to the write it yourself. <laughs> yeah. You don't like it running on the loom. Anyway, there's a floating point registers. <laughs> we got floating point registers. There's a whole bunch of those too in, in this in this monstrosity. There they are, the FPRs. And uh, I just wanted to show there should be a 3.14 in one of these. That's another thing I, that you never get um, unless you turn off optimization on a CPU. Optimization has this habit of just taking all your code and reducing it down to one line. <laughs> you have this wonderful big program and it comes out it's very, very short because the optimizer in your compiler will simplify everything for you, right? Sometimes you don't want that because you want to see, you want to step by step, right? You want to see the 3.14 in the register. And you're looking, looking at, where is it? Well, the, the compiler probably optimized it away, right? It's not there right now. So I put in a couple volatile statements in an attempt to uh, stop it from optimizing. 
so that I can at least see something in a register. When you put volatile, that means don't don't optimize it, more or less. <laughs> Leave it alone, right? Optimize or skip it. So you should see. Uh, didn't do very, very many interesting things because they only have one subject. But that's that's the basic gist of it. Uh, and there's another mode to this thing. You can put it into this window, split window mode, where you get all of the windows all at once in different spots. If you like that, if that's your thing. I don't know. Might be your thing. I'm not judging. Is there a, a live look? Variable states in this? Did I miss that? Variable state. Yeah. Let's Other look. Let's look. Uh, yeah, I'm going to load it again. No. You can walk off. Just work. Wrong keyboard. Right time on the user. Two keyboards, you hit the wrong one. Start for a debugger. Like, 
like you can now go add and add and add more features, right? Very good. And this is built from scratch. Yeah, built from scratch. Is it based on or GDB or anything else? No, no. We we tried porting GDB many, many, many times, and it always runs into troubles. Always into troubles. I'm always told it's spaghetti code, but I've never looked at GDB to be honest. Me neither. So I don't know if that's a true assessment. Because a lot of people hate GNU <laughs> software in general. So. Can I manipulate register contents? Hmm? Can I manipulate register? That was the question, yeah. I don't think you can. I, I didn't notice an option. Usually you write the thumbs button or something. Yeah. Okay. Not, not right this second, although we could add it. <laughs> and there's a, there's a console that it keeps too, which is nice. So you can see all the steps that it's, it's been doing. What you were what you were up to, it's kind of a running log of what you what you've been up to. So it's a very simple debugger, but uh, like I said, it works well. It works well. Especially since he fixed the operating system to make it work. That's impressive. That is very impressive. That's incredibly impressive. Yeah. <coughs> there was, a, there was, was a, given access to the source to do that, obviously? Yeah. Yes. Yeah. Yes. So you guys? Yes, from, from you guys. That's right. You guys? Yep. <laughs> <laughs> yep. Got, got him in. Got him in the club. It's all good. Wow. So, because <laughs> I really wanted a debugger. Other yeah, people. yeah, yeah. Now, yeah. Phil did his own thing. I, I, did, I did not help with the testing in any way. I was very lazy. But opened the doors. That's the Push it open. That kind of thing. <laughs> Remove barriers. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, yeah that, that's all I did. So I, did, I didn't get any credit. That's what I mean. yeah. uh, there's, there, there's a lot of, actually, there's a good list of credits uh, that came with Spark. There's, there was a, I think all of us in the list. Were you really involved with this? What? This? Yeah. No. Sure. Well, I don't. Yeah, so sure. I want to try something. 
Although so, plug your ears in case that blow us out. Right. But I, I, last night I found out that they've got a new sound system and pay system and wireless mics. Yep. yep. So I'm going to turn this guy on. Well, I want that to be on. Okay, I'm just keeping my thumb on the Because I'm hoping button. that the sound here will be better for people online. Yeah, yeah. so. Hello? Can the people online hear better when we use this microphone? Please, come in and chat. Wait for it. Wait for it. it takes a minute to get up there. The speed of sound instead of light. I can hear good either way. Oh. Well, maybe it was an individual okay, yeah. problem and not a kind of problem. <laughs> There's a volume knob on your PC that you can turn up. <laughs> See, just real quick, the um, the version of Spotless that we've been using, yeah, it's the most here, so we could. Um, it's like a year old. I think, I think right? some people can hear better. Yeah, yeah, the most recent version that's publicly available is 2.21. Yeah. Okay. So there haven't been any changes. It's not one. That's what you want. Thank you, sir. That's probably the fourth floor. Somebody's ears. Because it wasn't stable enough to use because we need yes. some fixes in the OS. So that's that's one reason I didn't want to show them up. The other reason was I did not use it. I'm curious. Uh, to the okay. Okay. I have a microphone for an unknown reason. Um, I don't know either because you have the main mic. <laughs> These are for the audience. The wireless mics are for the people in the audience. You have that statue in the kind of look like right now. <laughs> Any other questions? No? Okay, I'm going to mute it. I muted myself, and I will hit the stop presenting button. If no one, no one has any questions online. Do you know, or, or is Bill well, handling it? We, oh, we've got six things in the chat. Okay. I, I, I'll turn the mic back on if need be. I don't see many questions in the chat, people responding to the, the sound quality. I did see one earlier, and I don't know if we talked about this. Someone had asked about if um, Spotless is on GitHub, do we have a, yep. a link to that? Uh, apparently it's not readily findable. Really? I found it no problem. <laughs> <laughs> Weird. Uh, okay.
So imagine that hello world. Yeah. It's not too bad. But we can make them worse. That's not hard. <laughs> bad is a murderous. What is this bad G? I'm not understanding. Star Trek Lower Decks. You say that like I'm supposed to know. What is well, it? we can sit down with some show. But show it like my game. Show. <laughs> How the heck am I supposed to know that? You're a geek. Not that much of a geek. You're a fucking huge geek. <laughs> <laughs> hey, no fat jokes. Only I get to do that. Oh, okay, how about um, uh, uh, geek of epic proportions? And still, that still sounds good. <laughs> <right? laughs> uh, geek of incredible level. Okay, I'll, I'll take that. <laughs> Oh, no. As long as they don't call you a nerd. Wait a minute. So, Badgie is a character on a Star Trek show? Yeah. Uh, animated. Star Trek Lower Decks. It's an animated Star Trek show? Yeah, and it's hilarious. Is this on like on YouTube? What is this? Yeah, it's on Netflix. Oh, no. On, uh, I think it's Paramount. Paramount. Yeah. Like it's a proper show. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. It's Kevin. Oh, yeah. Kevin. Yeah. Kevin. Yeah. Kevin. It's like year six. Yeah. 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 Yeah.